Hey everybody, this is Roger Care, Care Reviews, and yes, I have a Japanese version of the Across the Spider-Verse poster in the background. Um, so, yeah. Uh, getting to the point, I'm here today in the basement again for a, hopefully all structurally together, uh, Nerf uh, retro review. Um, I haven't done a retro review for um, a Nerf blaster in a while. Um, I think when I was trying to do some back in the day, I was trying to make it like a history lesson of like how far uh, most platforms have come. So to for today's demonstration, this is my personal, um, I guess, loadout for uh, the Elite Rampage, uh, the Elite 1.1 at this point. Um, I don't have um, my Raider anymore as proof of concept because that got broken years ago through a lot of uh, in indoor play with uh, friends and family and stuff like that. So over here on the stock is a Modulus holster stock. They had, I forgot, I think it was the tri when that was coming out. Um, I, I'll, cor I'll correct me in the comments down below or go to, I guess, the Hobbies Wikipedia. I'm honestly amazed by the hobby of the Wikipedia, so I'll try to uh, get that in the links in the description down below. So um, the reason why I have this as my personal loadout right out of the gate is that I believe Rainbow Nerf, um, I forgot the exact channel, but uh, card of there uh, to his um, inline clip mod, which kind of inspired me to get uh, another uh, Rampage again um, after all this time since my Raider days. Um, the big difference, um, I wish I had time to take out the internals for this, um, uh, is mainly because uh, it has direct plunger. At the time, uh, Raiders were known and a lot of first generation uh, and strike blasters were known to have uh, reverse plunger stuff, unless we're talking the long shot. Um, speaking of, I am very much aware of uh, Zuru's finally in the game pro line and uh, their first name for a pro blaster is kind of ironic. They're calling theirs the long shot as well. And obviously, it's, I think, a Linux, uh, Lynx, uh, my, my apologies on the, the actual platform they're working off of, is basically a um, uh, bullpup with Slamfire. And I figure since uh, the news of that has been circling around in, in most Nerf channels the last couple of weeks, I kind of wanted to start about talking about the grand day that started all when it came to direct prime and slam fire uh base blasters which is rampage in this case but before we get to that i want to do a quick uh review something i promised uh it's too early slash uh i guess sage ryan fans on their discord uh for the nerf fortnite dual pack uh long story short um i believe her pirate themed uh mini campaign series just wrapped up so card there to any of the episodes that i'll find off the top of my head um, so the big difference for this dual pack is a uh, very beginner basic um, long story short for that um, This is already modded. This is not because I have a horrible track record with um, Hammer shot um, clones or reskins in this case. However, the big difference uh, and takeaway for this particular uh, I guess mechanisms case is that it's uh, got a return spring, so that does give you a better opportunity to at least have a better catch when it comes to putting the spring spacer that this will most likely have and as you can also tell, it's still uh, in uh, ARs, uh, still attached, because again, I kind of like want to make it like a plank blaster for friends and family and their kids and stuff like that as time goes on. As for um, their uh, pistol in this particular case, I don't know the exact name. I know it has a different um, Fortnite name. I'll probably leave it down below as well. Um, I think uh, I forgot the exact channel, but he's more of a family-friendly one. I'll, I'll leave his uh, channel up there. Um, his big takeaway for this is that it's the most looking like a 1911. So... Honestly, if you want to like cosplay or paint this up for like a John Wick kind of thing. Um, also, speaking of, I was supposed to use this uh, for my John Wick Chapter 4 review. Go there just to see how far I've come trying to get this uh, place has stump in time. Um, so yeah, the return spring is still there if I could replicate it on a cam. It's a little bit slower because one half of um, the pusher, um, I guess, uh, mech, in it uh, with um, the spring and the plunger got broken off. Um, and as of last night of this recording, I was trying to super grow it back together, but then I realized, oh, it's a regular super glue. It's gonna have a 24 hour cure all. So I should have just epoxied it or whatever. So long story short, we're going off of a base blaster still. This is still the base um, spring space uh, catch, base uh, trigger catch. Um, only thing that's just different is uh, AR removal, as you can tell, it's a little bit louder, obviously, for most AR removals in, like, a single-shot environment. And another reason why I like to have this paired with, uh, the Rampage in this particular case is the color scheme. Uh, for most, uh, this is all hat by now, when, uh, 2.0 is now a thing these days. But the whole blue and white color scheme, I kind of like. Um, for a while, it's been my channel's colors, I think, for most of my, uh, personal, um, 
figure forms when I do normal movie and TV reviews. I tend to have that color scheme for figures and stuff like that. Uh, go to where I was doing, I think, um, Mandalorian Season 4 uh, for proof of concept. That be my, ch my channel's color scheme going forward. And um, honestly, um, a good 12 years later, I would comfortably say if I had to go to a stock war, um, this would be my personal loadout. However, this is not the bag it came with. Another big takeaway for me back in the day versus now was the 25 mag. Um, also, I kind of thrifted and found uh, at my local 99 cent store of all things, a uh, genuine uh, first, uh, never been uh, shot, never been sniffed if you're a Captain Xavier fan, uh, AccuStrike rounds. And I can tell you from a little bit of play testing on just a stock spring still, it's still performing just fine. So let me back up a bit to show the slam fire. All right, regular fire. And um, yeah, it's still fairly consistent. Again, Hasbro really needs to get back to either AccuStrike or probably finally adopt a real pro line, personally speaking, like it, like adopt into Halflinks. Um, my apologies in advance for being like the very few small channel nerf uh, guys that don't have a Mark IV yet, Dart Zone wise. But ultimately, living in a post um, Dart Zone world now, I really think this has a lot of potential still to be not competition ready, but definitely local war ready. Like I said with uh, Rainbow Mods, if you can do an inline clip with this, uh, it'll work just fine. I know there've been like almost half a decade of like mod kits I would love to get around to doing like maybe a Picatinny system, maybe like uh, a decent um, stock system, even though I'm really, this is probably the most comfortable stock I'm gonna have for a while for the Rampage. And um, having um, the pistol element with it does give you like a backup kind of thing. If you're going to a stock war or even a stock HVZ war, this is exactly the premier kind of like um, platform I would probably run in a war. Uh, maybe like a dump pouch right here for like a couple extra drums. Or um, if I want to do like a shotgun kind of thing, again, stick to like eight, six, or even um, 10 round mags like the banana mag here from my uh, Moto Blitz uh, blaster. I think last card's the review there. And it's fairly adoptable. Um, I think uh, what I was trying to look for when I was uh, repurchasing this on Amazon is all the one-star reviews just to see like who's like that like not ready for nerf kind of like uh, fan base or who's too casual for it. I think the common complaint for those one-star reviews is they don't know how to take out the mag, which is kind of funny because like the instructions are right there. So uh, I guess for any of those Amazon reviewers, um, yeah, the pusher here to get rid of uh, the mag is there. You still have to prime it and then Flick it out um, for the magwell. Um, what I've known for most of the uh, inline clip mods is that they somehow found a way to get rid of the magwell because this is a permanent attachment. This is again one of the early things that Nerf is now known to do. Um, the one thing that I love for this platform as well, and I think the biggest advantage is, is yeah, obviously this is assembly for all the other accessories over the years, but if you can see here, there's a that button is a reset. Say you're, you're going, you're going, and then you lock up halfway here and you can't get out and it's stuck in there, it releases. And more importantly, it helps release uh, any of the tension, get back into the jam, clear it, like so with the jam door here. I, again, there's a lot of the, ba of the base blaster I'm very nostalgic to that I want to keep for most of my mods going forward if I'm going to uh, buy another one in uh, Premiere, do... Uh, modern day kits and stuff like that. I think I've left a, a question about that in uh, Walcom's Discord. I'll probably get to answer it probably after this recording, just saying. Um, ultimately, for over 40 bucks, which is still uh, the actual stock price what it was new at the time, and a non-functioning set aside, uh, is this worth um, being in a practical war nowadays up against like Lynx's, uh, Snickers Cages, a lot of like premier um, hobby grade stuff over many different platforms that have leaps and bounds like moved forward the hobby than this ever could. Um, depends, mods may vary. Um, if anything, there have been mods to turn this into a traditional secondary. There have probably been mods to master key this with uh, other blasters, like I said earlier. Uh, ultimately, it's your preference and it's how I started this hobby, how I started being in Nerf in general, how I started doing content creation, <laughs> talking about mostly the Elite platform at the time. I think one of my highest views starting out when this was new was my Strife video, doing a fire test, <laughs> like pre-YouTube short stays. So yeah, uh, be on the lookout when I do demos, demos of that on like future Nerf reviews and stuff like that. 
honestly, um, if this was a normal review and I still had a rating scale like my Nerf reviews, uh, this is a 10. Again, this is a leaps and bounds better um, blaster than the uh, Raider. There are some complications going on. There's still some hiccups, but not too much. Um, as a stock blaster, you can't say no. If you see this at like a local, um, I guess, Goodwill for almost none of these accessories, if it's just down to like half of what the blaster usually is or like a dead mod there's still probably kits out there to probably clean it up get it ready to go and get ready for an upcoming local war of anything um this is like i said my personal loadout this is what i would definitely run a war with and honestly um i still love it this is still at the end of the day a rampage and a rampage is gonna rampage so uh i guess being the most, I guess, cheery uh, version of my nerf review aside, uh, let me get back to my overall rating for the dual pack um, before I close out this video. Um, it's a good um, 8 out of 10. Long story short, if this is going to be your first mod, I highly recommend the dual pack. Um, that $40, like I said earlier, doesn't kind of apply for both of these blasters. <laughs> Because, honestly speaking, you can have separate packs of these. You can just have just this blaster as its own individual release. Same thing here for their ham sorry for their pirate gun. And it would be pretty good. Um, the big benefit for people who are starting into Nerf Wars is that return spring that does give you a more commanding, like, confirmation knowing that you locked it in. It's good. It's ready to go. Kind of, like, ready to, you know, fire kind of style blasting. Um, ultimately, um, should you get this new with just the two-pack? Um... Again, if you're a Fortnite fan, if you're going to use it for cosplays and stuff like that, that's probably the cheapest you're going to probably be for a personal, like, cosplay kit you probably have that's probably way more than that as time went on. So, again, that's up to you. That's not really a me thing. It's really a you thing at this point as far as price get ranges go. And, um, yeah, that's pretty much it. <laughs> so, uh, with a, I guess, wow, still half a mag, uh... Shots over here to my end cards, yeah. And it's been a while since I've had, it's been a while. Yeah, it's been a while since I've had uh, live rounds uh, closing on the end cards. Uh, yeah, so end card over here to my previous review, and uh, which was Fast X. Uh, other hand here to not my uh, Candela Obscura, soon to be uh, Critical Role Shore, because I'm going to try to make that a full video with one of the uh, Vox Pocket figures I have here, if anything character wise. And with that all being said, and hopefully next week, and I do mean hopefully, I get to see Shin Kamarar, yeah, very excited and very hyped uh, over here at Retro Kill Review, saying to uh, short here to uh, sub to the channel, notification bell down below for when I want to do future projects and future um, loadouts and probably characters uh, with the Raider because I'm pretty sure there's people out here in the X-Men life that kind of looks like that, if anything else, maybe Bishop, maybe somebody else. Uh, just saying that a lot of it's going to be a little weird. So yeah, end cards coming up. That all being said, take care, subscribe. And um, yeah, these are good blasters. Um, the ranges of the prices are a little mixed, but if you got the time, still totally worth it. Even 12 years on the Rampage's case. Anyway, take care, subscribe. And uh, like I said, Rampage is going to Rampage.